Hello. Hi, nice, nice you came here. This is a, a special session that we will be having um, today here in the Smart City Expo and World Congress. This session is about talent. This session is something new in this, in this, in this venue where a part of technology, a part of sustainability, a part of energy, they will be also talking about talent. And this session is the only one talking about talent, which I think that you will agree is the key engine for the 21st century economy. I'm Mateo Hernandez, I'm CEO of Barcelona Global, and I'm I will try to moderate a very interesting session with four different examples that will try to open your mind and open new paths for new policies on attracting and retaining talent among our cities. We will have Copenhagen, uh, a great city, a uh, Scandinavian city, capital of state in a mega region together with Malmo, so merging two different European states, the Danish states and, and, and Swedish. We will also have London, which a part of being the capital of the United Kingdom is maybe the most global city nowadays worldwide and they will be also talking about talent. We will also have a city coming from Texas, from the States, Austin. I don't know how, how, how far do you know Austin, but I would say that is one of the most amazing cities in the United States, fast growing cities, technology, entertainment and music. So you will hear about that, which is interesting. And last but not least, you will be also hearing about Barcelona, which is my hometown and the hometown of most of some of, of some of you here. But let me as a as an introduction to this to this section some some key concepts to focus that session. First of all is that I think that you will also agree that talent is the key engine for the growth of economies nowadays in the 21st century. So cities were located in the past where water was or where oil was or where key production factors were based and nowadays cities are highly competing, competing to attract talent, which is the key engine. So it's not anymore oil, it's not anymore the electricity or whatever, it's talent who's making cities and nations grow. That's the first concept. The second concept is that talent, compared to other production goods that we had in the past, is extremely mobile. So it's, mo it's, 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 it's fully mobile. So people with talent, that means people who can decide wherever they want to live, people because of their capacities, um, training, contacts, creativity, um, resources, whatever, um, they can decide if they want to live in Barcelona or they want to live in Copenhagen, in Amsterdam, in London, in Paris, wherever. So it's people extremely mobile. I'm sure that among the audience there's people who has moved from their hometown. So maybe you could, you could raise the hands, those that were born in a place were raised in a place and moved to another city. So, so it's more than half of the city has moved, half, half of the audience have moved. That's the key example of mobility of talent. And the third thing is that cities are competing for that talent, are wishing, I, don't, I would say wishing, they wish, we cities wish to have people like you that are, have the capacities to move, have the capacities to, at the end, add value to our cities, add value through creativity, through research, through investment, through contacts, through training, whatever. So that's, that's the key aspect of, of, of this session. We will also discuss a part of the concrete examples that they will, they, that they will look at. We, they will also discuss about what does moves talent to one city or to another. The first thing maybe would be opportunities. Which cities give opportunities or not give opportunities? Um, also, they will talk about quality of life, they will talk about taxation, they will talk about global positions, they will talk about um, lifestyle, they, about, they will talk about education or how talent attracts talent, which at the end is what maybe most of the cities are growing with, talent attracts talent. I'm the CEO of uh, an organization here based in Barcelona and raised in Barcelona, which is Barcelona Global. And maybe this would be an example of something, of someone trying to do something to make Barcelona a global city. And our main aim, we are a 1,000 members organi organization based in Barcelona, fully private, so no public money. 
highly transversal with companies, big companies, local, international, research centers, cultural institutions, entrepreneurs, um, business schools, universities, and many individuals who commit with my organization, with Barcelona Global, because they want Barcelona to really be a global city, attractive for talent and attractive for economic activity. And in that organization, we mainly focus on Barcelona as a magnet for talent. That's why we helped uh, FIDA, Smart City Expo, and we helped Ignasi to um, create this, this, this session here, um, where what we try is to discover and share how other cities are attracting and developing talent to promote themselves. But in order to begin with the speakers who are the important guys in, in town, let me, let me show you one slide, my only slide, which is that one. Is there? It's not there. Now. Here. This man um, is Mike Bloomberg. He, a part of creating Bloomberg Media, he was the mayor for New York City. And when opening a new space in New York, which is, which is Roosevelt Island, which is focused into um, creating talent on engineering, together with Technion in Israel and Cornell in the States, he raised a sentence which is maybe the focus of this session, is that talent attracts capital much more in an effective way than capital attracts talent. And this is the focus, this is the main issue of this session. So as mentioned before, we will have four great speakers and we will begin, um, each of the speakers will have eight minutes, eight minutes, and there's a counter there, eight minutes to present what they are doing. The first one is Dan Rosenberg. He is the senior talent acquisition manager, which is a great name. Imagine having a senior talent acquisition manager for a city which is Copenhagen, and he will explain us what Copenhagen, as Greater Copenhagen, is doing to really attract talent. So Dan, please join us on the stage and give him an applause, because he will be. Thank you. Thank you, Matteo. Can you hear me? It's good. Thank you very much for having me here. It's an honor to talk about Greater Copenhagen and the initiatives we're doing there in terms of attracting and retaining international talents, which is key for the growth of the region. So I also have a couple of slides. Let's see. There you go. Thanks a lot. So who are we? Next slide. <laughs> no, I can start explaining who Copenhagen Capacity is. We are the official organization for investment promotion and growth in the capital region of Copenhagen and region Zealand. And we have been around for 25 years, working with creating growth in the region. We are doing that by attracting foreign companies, foreign investments. There you go. And maybe I should stand over here. Well, you say next. OK. Next, I say next. For the last seven years, we have also been focusing on attracting and retaining international talents. After the financial crisis, we had realized that a lot of the, also the Danish companies struggled with uh, finding the highly specialized talents they were looking for. And we are talking about a fully demand-driven need here from the company's perspective. We are talking to them. And in that dialogue, we realized that they have a very hard time finding engineers, IT tech professionals, and specialists within life science. So highly skilled labor, there is simply not enough in, the, in Denmark, uh, and also not in, in the rest of Europe, actually. And I will come back to that. So next. <laughs> 
What are we talking about here when we are branding the region? It's Greater Copenhagen. It's a fairly new brand, which was a reality from January 2016. Two countries went together, the southern part of Sweden, which is called Skåne, nowadays also the region Halland, and two regions on the Danish side, which is the capital region and region Zealand. So four regions, two countries are working together when you, we are branding the region internationally, we would talk about Greater Copenhagen with 4.3 mil million inhabitants. And we are all of a sudden comparable with other metropoles such as Amsterdam and London and other great places. And here we come back to this size matters. We have something to offer in terms of companies, in terms of opportunities. Next. So I'm not an expert in smart cities, to start with that. I'm an expert in talent attraction, but I know that once in 2006, 17, we were ranked as the world's smartest city. Wow, that's a cool thing. So what lies in this, I will not talk a lot about that. But if we look at the next slide, I can tell for sure that we are, one of, we are the most bicycle-friendly city in the world. I go by bike every day to the work, and I'm very fortunate to live in the city center and I have 10 minutes bike ride to my work. That's a great, great thing. And we actually just opened a couple of weeks ago the broadest bike lane in, in Europe, I think it is. It's more than 15 meters broad. So this is a really good thing for all the biking people in, in, in Copenhagen. So it's very convenient and easy to come, come back and forth. So next slide. If you want to know more about why and how we are a smart city, you can visit this, this campaign that we are have running right now in, in terms of sustainable construction. Next. So we have a challenging situation here. We are lacking. A lot of companies, they are, they are not they are experiencing unsuccessful recruitment. They cannot hire the people they are like, looking for. And we are especially lacking engineers and IT specialists. And this is... If you look at the numbers below, there is a lack of 900,000 software developers in EU in 2020. That's just in a month. So this is a huge problem, not only for Copenhagen, for Denmark, it's a problem for the whole Europe. Next slide. And we also know that it's a good business for the state of Denmark to be able to attract these talents that we are lacking here. If you are as a single coming to Denmark, staying for five and a half years, you will actually contribute with pure taxes to the Danish system, to the Danish society with almost 100,000 euro. So it's a good business. And beside the companies, they get their things done. They get the people they need. Next. So what we know is that we are not trying to compete with the companies, talent acquisition efforts, their employer branding. What we are doing here, which is quite uniquely, is that we are primarily branding the region. We're talking about the positive aspects of the life and the, 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 work, the, the work you can get in, in Greater Copenhagen. This is a, something we call employer place branding. It's a rather new concept. So we provide the companies with the why Denmark story uh, that they would need to attract the, the candidates that would not necessarily know about that local Danish company. When we talk about the place and the quality of life, and all the positive aspect of the life you can get in Copenhagen, we can trigger some candidates here from Latin America, from Turkey, from all around the world who would not consider Great Copenhagen. And let, just let's face it, Denmark is a really small country. It has the size of a population of a, of a small town in China. So next slide, here is a couple of the examples of the banners that we are promoting towards the audience, towards the candidates. On social media, that's where we are. It's fully digital efforts here. And we have some of the, we have the largest company in, 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 the, in the windmill producing area. It's called Vestas. At the next slide, you can see that we can also, also offer this balance in life. We have the working hours, but afterwards you also have a life. You will have a great deal of fun in Copenhagen. So lots of vibrant, exciting restaurants and so forth. But I will not bore you with all the nice aspects of Copenhagen because I'm here to talk about the way we succeeded with employer place branding and actually attracting the candidates. So on the next slide, 
you can see the, how we work with talent. And this is probably the most central part of my presentation. So what we have developed here is that we are running a number of digital campaigns every year. We are doing two to three digital campaigns within IT tech, within automation, within robotics, within game industry, within different sectors. Gathering up to 20 companies, promoting their up to 50 jobs towards the audience uh, through the social media. We are, we are activating the candidates. We receive typically around 1,000 applications, which we are screening and forwarding to the companies. But beside those 1,000 applicants, Imagine yourself, would you be ready to move to Copenhagen just because of a banner ad? Probably not. But what we see is that another 10,000 people sign up for our career news, and we will continuously try to promote them to apply for the jobs which we are continuously promoting at the Greater Copenhagen Career Portal. And through these campaigns, we have been able to gather 32 32,000 international talents that receive career news from, from our career portal. And last but not least, some few facts here. Over the last, I would say, five years, we, through our efforts here, have attracted around 1,000 international uh, talents to Greater Copenhagen. Every year we work with around 100 companies. Um, we have 32,000 international talents sign up in our talent pool, and more than 140 million times the message about why Denmark and southern Sweden, of course, has been exposed. And very last slide, these are some of the awards and the recognitions that we have been very fortunate to receive. We are seen out there, which is very nicely. Um, and I think that's about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. He will come back on the stage later on with all the panelists. So, no, no you can you can stay there because if not, you won't see the presentation of. Now, the next speaker is Lala G. Clay. She is the director of education and talent of London and Partners, which is the um, big um, attracting activity, yeah. students, talent, investment from London. That's so. right. Hello, everyone. How nice to be here. Have I got some slides? Duh. Oh, yes, it works. Magic. Good. So um, I'll start off just by saying a little bit about London and Partners and who we are and what we do. We are the Mayor of London's official business growth and promotional agency. So it's our pleasure and our privilege to promote London around the world. And um, we are funded by the Mayor to do that. We also have various commercial streams, but the Mayor knows how important it is that there's someone out there telling London's story brilliantly. And we do that across a number of fields. We do that in business. So we have teams out in the major markets in the US and China and India and elsewhere looking for businesses that might want to come and land in London. We bring them to London. We help them establish themselves there. We also help grow small companies. And then as they get to a particular size, we help them internationalize. So a lot of what we do is, is around business for London. But we also do tourism, so if you're ever in London, please use the Visit London app and the Visit London website because those are created in-house by us to make visiting London more fun. We talk a lot to um, conferences and events, so perhaps next year this event will be in London, that would be fantastic. Um, we also do major events, we do things like Ride London, um, when um, American football comes to London we promote that looking a bit way back in the past now, but we were very big in the London Olympics as well. And finally, last but very much not least, because it's the bit I particularly look after, we look after higher education and talent. So it's my role to encourage international students to come to London and to encourage international talent also to come to London. And I wanted to put this slide up, not just to, to blow our own trumpet about the many things that we do, but to make the point that a city is a, is a holistic thing. You can't pick out little bits of a city and promote them separately. You have to think of your city as a whole and the way all these bits come together. For instance, we know that one of the key things that draws international students to come and study in London is if they've had, had a positive visitor experience. They come aged 11 or 12 with their families, they have a fantastic time. When they come to think about a university, they want to come and study in London. 
And if you study in London, you are five times more likely than someone else to come and set up in London, set up a business in London. So you can see how all these things work together. It's a very important kind of virtuous circle. So thinking about this specifically for talent, well, the numbers are pretty big in London. There's very nearly six million jobs in London, and about 10% of those are in creative. Who knew that? That's amazing, isn't it? Um, we've got an awful lot of digital tech professionals. We would love some more. We don't want Copenhagen to take them all. We'd love them to come to London. Um, we're a very highly educated city. 59% of Londoners are degree educated, and that means we're getting more and more high-skilled jobs. There's been a tremendous growth in high-skilled jobs. Um, with my own special interest in higher education, we have four of the world's top 40 universities right with us in London. And we're also part of the Golden Triangle with Oxford and Cambridge, which means that we've got four of the world top 10 universities within a 60 mile radius, which is a pretty amazing thing. So just like um, in the Bloomberg slide, which Matteo showed us, um, talent attracts capital, capital attracts talent, talent also attracts talent. When you've got good people, they attract other good people. We like to think of London as a city of creative energy. If we had to sort of distill ourselves down into a strap line, that's, that's what we would say about ourselves. And again, going back to this idea of London as a holistic thing, as a, a city that works on a number of levels. Of course, we have some geographic advantages and we have some historical advantages as well. London's been where it is for over a thousand years, so we've got fantastic history and heritage. But we're also geographically very lucky because we are still, for the time being, very close to the heart of Europe. Let's hope that carries on. Um, we are midway between the big American market and the Far Eastern market, so we are a real global center just by good fortune. But every city also has things that it can flex, that it can put more emphasis on, that it can plan to do better with. And we really work hard on education. We work hard particularly on our higher education, but we also work hard on um, attracting international schools into London so that there's a, a pipeline into those universities. We work very hard on regulation. It's a hard balance to get right because you don't want to be unduly bureaucratic, but equally companies coming in need to know that the regu regulatory environment is safe, that the rule of law applies, that you can get on with your business knowing that things are going to work for you. We work very hard at being an open and diverse culture. You know, London is one of the most diverse cities on the planet. Um, we have people from more than 200 countries who've come to live and work in London, and they've all bought their own special addition to it. So it's a very creative place to be. And we also would like to say that we have a good quality of life. We've got wonderful museums. 40% of London is actually green space. That's amazing. You think of it as being this very built up sort of area. Actually, it's not. There's an awful lot of parks and gardens there as well. No, don't, don't give up on me now. No. Next, can we see that? Ah. Yes. I'll just touch on this because um, going back to what I said earlier on about how concerned the mayor is about talent, the mayor sets the strategy for London and he thinks very hard about talent. And what he wants to think about is this idea of good economic growth. That if you are a city, you can say, let's just go for growth, let's get bigger the whole time. That's actually not necessarily very good for the people who live there. So the mayor's focus is on a London that works for all Londoners. So he wants us to be growing. He wants us to be attracting great talent. He wants us to be investing in infrastructure and in specific sectors, which include tech and life science and creative. But very importantly, he wants that to work for Londoners so that Londoners too are able to take advantage of the growth, um, the positive growth which is coming to London. So he's very concerned about education and making sure the fruits of growth are shared among all Londoners. I'll just touch on this very briefly. I wanted to put a little slide in about smart cities because it's obviously the theme of why we are here. But just to pick out that the mayor knows that without um, digital leadership and skills, the whole idea of being a smart city is doomed to failure. So he is putting in much more about um, digital skills within the work that we're doing. So specifically about um, attracting talent and developing talent. And I know that you're very interested in specific um, initiatives that we're taking part in. These are four things that we do that help us attract great talent to London. We do work on the students. I think, as I said earlier on, 
international students are kind of the, the ground from which everything else grows. If you've got lots of good international students coming in, then they build those networks, they stay and they create good growth in London, or they go back home and they become ambassadors for London in their home countries. So every penny you spend on attracting international students is money well spent. There's also a lot of incubator and accelerator programs. We have our own in London and partners. Most London universities have them. There's a very positive, um, deliberately created positive ecosystem for incubators and accelerators because again, if you get them, if you get people early, if you get businesses early, you push through very well. Um, we work very hard on clusters, so that may be a geographical cluster. You may be familiar with what's going on in the Olympic Park. I'm being hurried up. Um, what's going on in the Olympic Park, where we're putting a whole load of new tech businesses in there, and they are creating a positive ecosystem. But we also have, for instance, a life sciences cluster, which is not geographically focused, but thinking about all the many uh, people with life sciences skills and capabilities, and we help to network them in. And we have a talent toolkit. If you go online, jobsandtalent.london, we've put together a toolkit which is designed to help businesses when they're coming to London to find the talent. And again, just very briefly, as I know I'm out, um, just again, putting emphasis on the fact you don't just attract talent, you have to look after it once it's there. So we work very hard with employers to make sure that the London is creating the skills that the employers need. We do talk to employers all the time about where the gaps are and how we can educate people into those gaps as well as just pull people into the gaps from outside. Um, and there's a lot of money and time and effort designed to help Londoners access this great educational provision that we're creating for them. So to leave a message, London is all about good growth. Let's grow, let's have this fantastic talent, we'll love it, we'll look after it, we'll give it a great quality of life, and that will do better for Londoners as a whole. That's me, thank you. Thank you, Lalaji. And now the third speaker will be Kui Lan Teo. She comes from Austin. She's the Vice President for the Deve Talent Development and Acquisition of the Austin Chamber of Commerce. So the third of the panelists with talent on their um, card. You can. No. Can you hear me? Yes. Show of hands, how many people have been to Austin, Texas? Good, a handful. My name is Quilan Tio. I'm VP of Talent at the Austin Chamber of Commerce. Uh, for those that are not um, familiar with my organization, it was founded in 1877. It is a 2300 um, membership organization made up of businesses, and it is also a nonprofit. And a lot of the work that we do in Austin centers around economic development and talent attraction. So I guess a lot of you have heard about Austin region in the news. Some great things uh, are happening, and this is just a uh, few examples of what has been announced on the rankings of Austin. It's top five among the U.S. metros for net population gain. Um, we have a very high um, population of adult, uh, let's see, very high population of, of college graduates as well. And I'd like to talk about something called Opportunity Austin. Opportunity Austin was started in 2004. And this will give you an idea as to why we started Opportunity Austin. We call it OA. And imagine Austin before 2004. We lost 37,000 jobs. $1.5 billion worth of payroll was lost. We had an increase in our poverty rate. So what happened was all the business leaders got together and they decided we need to do something. You know, if this goes on, we're going to go really downhill. What they did was they took Austin and the surrounding areas of Williamson, Travis, Bastrop, Caldwell, and Hayes County and started a regional economic initiative, economic development initiative, which targeted the following industries. And I'm going to highlight that defense part uh, a little bit later. But these are the industries that we work on. Um, clean tech, advanced uh, general manufacturing, and the reason was because we were heavily reliant on the semiconductor industry, and when that tanked, a lot of people lost their jobs. So this is Opportunity Austin 4.0. As you can see, majority of our resources are towards corporate recruitment, and a lot of it in talent, and this is highly unusual for any chamber in the United States. We dedicate almost a third of our resources towards talent development and attraction. Place. 
for those have, that have been to Austin, you probably know it's not just cowboys and horses and hay, you know, dried hay all around. It's actually the capital of the state of Texas. It's the 11th largest city in the U.S. Our metro population is 2.2. Our labor population is 1.2. 150 people move to Austin every single day. 55,000 people move to Austin a year. Our population nearly doubles every 20 years. Triangle, the Texas Triangle. 80% of the uh, population lives Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, Austin. So we are, you know, attracting talent from any of these cities are very easy. It's about three hours, three to four hours to Dallas, two hours to Houston, two hours to San Antonio. We have a lot of nonstop jet destinations. Why is this important? Because it allows talent to travel easily city to city and also country. We have direct flights to London, Paris, Amsterdam, Frankfurt, and we work on a lot of direct, direct flights based on what our company needs are in our region. It's a great place to get vitamin D. We have 300 days of sunshine, um, lots of activities. Formula One was something we just had a couple of weeks ago. Oh, okay. Lots of culture, entertainment, presidential library, at the University of Texas at Austin. Lots of outdoor activities, as you can see. We also have something called South by Southwest, and we're also known as the live music capital of the world. Every single night, you probably get 200 live venues going on in Austin. Uh, Austin City Limits is a um, festival is where we also have more live music. We used to have one weekend of it. We got so popular, we now have two weekends of it. More about Austin, 2% below the US average. Cost of living is low. Medium age is 35 years. I don't fall in that category anymore. 45% um, have at least a bachelor's degree or more. And young population, as you can see, a third of it, 25 to 44, very, very young. Um, relocation origins, as part of our OA efforts, we, we go out and we recruit companies to Austin. And this, this was a way to diversify our economy. We were heavily reliant on one industry. And this is what happened. A lot of companies from California, 184. Other companies from Texas, 96. International, 77, New York. Internationally, Canada has proven the greatest source of relocations to Austin, UK, France, Australia, and South Korea. The largest investment Samsung has outside of South Korea is in Austin. These are examples of our private sector employers. Public sector employers, number of 75,000. It is the state capital. As you can see, we've managed to diversify what we used to have semiconductor companies in there, but we've got a lot of others as well. And those that are not aware, Whole Foods started in Austin as well. Summary of results from our um, OA initiative. And this is 2004 to 2019. We created 422,000 jobs. We lost 37. We created 422,000. Payroll increase impact is 25.5 billion. Talent. How much talent do we have in Austin? Within a 60-mile radius, 174,000 enrolled for the class of 2018. That's fall enrollment. Within 100 miles of Austin, 459,000. So we have a lot of kids. A couple of things on talent. We work with school districts from kindergarten uh, all the way up to uh, high school. And we also have initiators for post-secondary education, uh, community colleges and technical colleges that offer two-year programs and vocational training. Um, we do a lot of financial aid for our students who can't afford post-secondary education. Our impact for class of 2019 was for the region itself, for federal financial aid, it was $150 million. Uh, we also do a lot, a lot of policy work with the chamber and with the state at, as well as at, at the federal level. I mentioned South by Southwest just now, and I think some of you may have visited Austin because of this conference. What is its impact is 355.9 million for 2019 itself. Um, quarter of the visitors are from other countries. And why is this important? Because we get 87,000 visitors to Austin. Future, what does Austin look like? 
We watch a lot of cranes, not the birds, but the actual cranes. Right now, I currently have over 250 projects in Austin. We also have a second downtown. It used to be nothing but this little patch of green grass here. Not anymore. This is where a lot of our companies, tech companies now have relocated. Uh, a lot of our young millennials actually live there. It's a mixed use residential office, living space. You can actually work, live, and play in the second downtown. And this is the Austin skyline change for 12 years, 2005 to 2017. Um, I'm missing a few buildings because this is from 2017, it's 2019, so that we added a few more. But this is the impact for us in Austin in the past 12 years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Quilan. Our last speaker will be Miquel Martí, CEO of Barcelona Tech City. So, uh, Mateo asked me to, to make it short. I'm going to make it really, really short. So, you'll see a video, and then I, we, I think we should move to, to here. So, well, it's, we, we'd, I'd like to present another kind of animal. So, we are, a Barcelona Tech City is, is a, so, it's, the, one of the of the organizations in, in in Barcelona trying to put Barcelona as a one of the big players at a, at at a worldwide scale as a hub. So and becoming in a hub uh, that means uh, being able to attract talent. So in some kind of way combining combining a good life, which is absolutely discounted in Barcelona, should be uh, combined uh, with with a proper hub in which you may have, to, in, you may develop a proper uh, uh, laboral life, okay? So Barcelona Tech City is a non-profit association created in, two, in 2013 uh, by the top entrepreneurs in the city when, when, with two main goals. On the one hand, putting Barcelona as a worldwide player in this worldwide league, and the second one is helping entrepreneurs at a local scale. So, the main goal is increasing, is it was increasing the level of the ecosystem to attract the, this talent and to promote the local talent. Okay, uh, Barcelona has been has been running the project for perhaps 25 years. Uh, it's been an increase of pace in the last five. So Barcelona has been not, right now it's one of the top five cities in in, in Europe. Last year attracted more than 1.3 billion euros. Spain as a whole attracted 1.3 uh, billion euros. Uh, as of investment, Barcelona attracted 100 million. So it, the ecosystem is growing fast. Uh, the rankings, uh, the, the, the overall rankings put us it, as a tier three at a worldwide scale. And that means that we're starting to compete to these big uh, capitals in, in Europe. So right now you're able to work for a big company or with, for, for a scale up or even on a startup and being combined with a proper life, with a lot of sun, a lot of a lot of culture as well, and and and, and a nice city to live on. Okay, so I would like to just put the video. Uh, you'll see, and then we can discuss some some of the issues. Barcelona Tech City es una asociación sin ánimo de lucro eh, que creamos con varios emprendedores pues hace ya más de cinco años y que hoy la conforman más de 400 emprendedores y representan a más de 600 compañías. Es una asociación abierta a todos los emprendedores de, de Barcelona y que tiene como objetivo atraer inversores internacionales a Barcelona y desarrollar la cultura emprendedora y el ecosistema digital en Barcelona. La zona del Port Vell representa, es, reflecta es molt l'esperit de 2.000 anys d'història de Barcelona. Per tant, per tant, vam venir cap aquí i vam trobar un edifici que representava la vella economia, perquè aquest, és, aquest edifici en concret, el PIR, és un, és un antic magatzem portuari, i alhora es barreja amb la nova economia. D'un sector que tendeix a una certa fragmentació, a una certa entropia, de sobte, en un únic espai, en 11.000 metres quadrats, es pot trobar una mostra bastant, bastant realista i bastant, bastant potent del que és l'ecosistema tecnològic. Vallabús és una plataforma que ens dediquem a la venda d'hores d'hotel. Quan em refereixo a vendre hores d'hotel, em refereixo a poder anar a un hotel i estar les hores que necessitis i pagar només per aquelles hores. 
Barcelona és un referent a nivell de turisme i no només és a nivell de turisme sinó a nivell d'emprendiment amb el que quan ajuntes aquestes dues variables fa que sigui un escenari perfecte perquè empreses internacionals puguin arribar a invertir en una ciutat com Barcelona. Tiendeo és una web i app que on agrupem tots els fulletons i les ofertes de les botigues que tenim al nostre voltant. Trobem els catàlegs i fulletons de tendes com per exemple el Carrefour, el Mediamarkt, el Zara, tot agrupat en una app i web. El PIR nosaltres vam ser de les primeres empreses que vam venir, fins i tot abans que vingués aquí a Barcelona Tech City. I el fet que arribessin i que realment aquest edifici es convertís en un enclau tecnològic ens ha ajudat moltíssim ja no només a nivell comunicació, sinó també amb interacció amb les altres empreses, amb veure que es mou gent aquí a l'edifici. Hi ha 12.000 metres quadrats, diguem-ho, llenes de start-ups, el coneixement fluye i hi ha moltíssim talent per metre quadrat. Justament el que busquem és aquesta transversalitat en la connexió entre les diverses verticals, perquè d'aquí en sortiran noves idees. Gent que treballa amb mètodes de pagament pot treballar perfectament amb gent de mobilitat o amb gent que està treballant o s'està especialitzant en l'experiència d'usuari. Això és el que busquem. Sorry, subtitles were supposed to be here. So, I don't know if you realized, uh, for us, one of the key elements to attract tra talent to Barcelona is this space. It's, this is our headquarters in the city. It's just close to the harbor. Uh, for us, it's our MVP. So we just we launched it in 2016 uh, with the idea of just checking out if it was worthy to, to gather more than 1,000 people here, more than 100 organizations. Fa, re, really, really different. So for us, technology is the common area, and we're talking about the different sectors. We do really believe that smart city is going to bring us different kinds of sectors to Barcelona, and we're going to consolidate several ones, uh, mobility, health, life sciences, uh, commerce, energy, fintech. So we're betting on some of it, on some of them. And the other part is that since we just checked that it was worth it to create this building. What we're trying to do, it's, it was pretty inspired in Boston, sorry. It's, more, it's really inspired in the Cambridge Innovation Center. Uh, we just really love what Boston did with the involvement of the, of the university and, uh, and all the different things they did in Kendall Square. We're trying to do more or less the same in the city, so we want to be technology part of the city because the, the city, uh, the, the, the technology should be for the citizens and developed by the citizens. So what we're doing here is creating a new tech campus in which you may find spaces like this in really nice places all over the city. So more or less would be the, the bed of Barcelona Tech City to attract this new talent, the talent that wants to have proper personal life and a proper working life as well. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. So now, now the, the, all the speakers could, could join us uh, with Mikel in, in the stage, and we will have roughly 10 minutes for a, quite a, a, a colloquium, uh, a discussion with, with us. And if you have any question, you please raise your hand. Ooh. But um, what, what, we, what we would like to, to ask them as first question, and they will give very short answers, is we identified about um, four aspects on attracting talent among their presentations. And, and, they, and they, each of them presented why Copenhagen, why London, why Austin, why Barcelona. And we discussed sometimes what about schools, not only on, on in terms of creating talent, which is important, but all, especially to accommodate new talent coming into towns. Of those four cities, three are highly specialized on attracting young talent. So Barcelona, Austin, and Copenhagen are highly specialized in attracting people who come by themselves, without family. Maybe, maybe they will build a family while they are in, in those cities. Meanwhile, London is specialized in attracting a broader view of talent. When those cities want to move from attracting this young talent up to a little more senior talent, the schooling system is important. And so that's one issue that we would like to raise. The second issue is about administrative procedures, bureaucracy. So um, Dan didn't explain, but he will. Um, in Copenhagen, they have the International House. It's a place where people like you willing to move to Copenhagen will find everything available. 
to easily move to Copenhagen. What information about schools, information about visas, about the identification card, about social security, all these kind of things all together, which is a thing that we ambition here in Barcelona. The third thing, the third aspect, which it's, it's, I, we think it's, it's important, is about taxation and cost of living. And maybe um, Quilan may explain us a little bit about mm -hmm. how taxation in Austin is attractive for US citizens and other mm -hmm. citizens from abroad. And maybe um, Miquel may complain about procedures and taxation <laughs> in Barcelona <laughs> as a key aspect to really um, improve attraction of talent. And regarding bureaucracy, maybe um, Lalaji may talk us or may tell us something what will come um, in some months after the Brexit in the UK and in especially in London. And the fourth aspect which would be relevant is about lifestyle. So um, Miquel mentioned why moving to Barcelona as an entrepreneur. Well, a part of everything, well, being based in the Pier 1 is something special. Um, Dan showed us that amazing picture with a little baby and the cycling. And so he's also selling quality of life. Austin is also selling quality of life. Mm -hmm. He's selling that after work you can go to live music and that's what people is, uh, is being attractive. And also Lalaji was telling us about those amazing parks in London as a matter of quality of life. Of those four, schools for families, procedures and bureaucracy, tax and, 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 and cost of living and lifestyle, I would like them to shortly tell us which they prioritize the most and maybe we can begin by Lalaji. Okay, um, talking about quality of life, I do think that's a critical one because it is sadly true that London is quite an expensive place to live. Housing is particularly expensive, transport is expensive, you can't kind of get away from that. But we would say that in terms of the added value you get from being in London, so much of London is in fact free, the museums are free, the parks are free, it's a great place to walk around. It's somewhere where you can have a very rich quality of, quality of life, addressing all kinds of areas of things that you're interested in. So, yes, it's expensive, but people do feel that they get value out of it. That's why they do keep coming back to London. So, thank you. So, quality of life, maybe following with quality of life, Miguel, uh, other things? So, I would say it's, I can complain. Can I complain? Can complain? So Please. I think our, our challenge is just uh, London does it, the, the things I know, it's, it's Copenhagen, it's really advanced in terms of technology adoption as a, as a, as a lifestyle. And that's one thing that you sh we should improve as a as a community, as a tech community. Uh, in terms of bureaucracy, uh, I think London is far ahead from us as well. And, and 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 in terms of, so the only thing we can match, in some kind of way, is the is the chance to have a big event in in, in Barcelona, the same way that mm -hmm. Dan Austin has in in in, his, in their city during the year with the South by Southwest. So, in some kind of way, we have several assets to take advantage of. So we have a proper administration that is giving support to the entrepreneurs. We have big companies working in Barcelona. Last year we were able to attract more than 130 international companies. That means international talent coming over. So that means that they are willing to live in Barcelona. They're two hours flight from, from London. They're three hours and a half flight from, from Copenhagen. Austin is a little bit far. Uh, <laughs> and, and so, being here, uh, working for an international company is feasible. So our job here is that understanding that regulation in terms of uh, how we can, we can attract uh, international companies, how the bureaucracy should be improved to make the, the process more, more, more feasible and more uh, on quicker should be paramount for, for our next goals. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Maybe Dan, what would you add? Lifestyle is definitely the attracting attraction factor here. What you can offer, and the, and we are talking about nation branding here. It's things that are awfully hard to change the perceptions of people, how they perceive countries. Stick to the to stick to your nation brands. To be honest about it, but le allow me to, to be a little theoretical because once you have done the attraction part, you have talking about all the positive aspects, and you have gotten all the candidates to come to your country. You also need to make sure they are feeling welcome and getting this good welcome and onboarding. And that is what, Matthew, what you also here briefly uh, pointed out, that we have something called International House in Copenhagen. It's a one-point entry where the newly arrived international talent can come 
and they will have all the administrative stuff settled within a half a day regarding uh, social security number, tax cards and all this. But at the next step, you also need to make sure that the people, the talents, feel comfortable, get socially integrated, want to stay in your part of the world. And that's why it's important for the spouses to also get a job and get, to get integrated into the job market, for example, to get the schools, that you have functioning in international schools for the kids. And at the end of the day, you need to have the good ambassadors when the, the international talents are leaving your destination and they go back and they talk positively about your part of the world. So if you're working within this field or want to have ambitions within it, have this model in mind, the attraction, the welcome and onboarding, the, the re ongoing retention and then the ambassadorship here. I would say that is something to have in mind. Thank you, Dan. And Quilan? Uh, yes, I think you can't separate quality of life with cost of living. Uh, for those that uh, familiar with the United States, you know that a lot of graduates now leave college or university or community college with a fair amount of debt. In the state of Texas, the average student debt per person is US $27,000. So being able to be in a city where you can afford rent, your car, your mortgage, your insurance, and yet maintaining quality lifestyle is, is crucial. Um, Austin does have the advantage. It is it is cheaper than, than other tech hub cities. Um, you know, you it's lots of fun. I just looked at the calendar yesterday. I have 15 festivals just for November alone. Um, that's lots of things to do. Shops are open 24 hours. Grocery stores are open 24 hours in some areas. So you know, when you have that sort of a lifestyle, it appeals a lot to fresh graduate from maybe another city or somebody who's come down to Austin due to South by Southwest. And that's actually a great promoter of our city as well. Um, not because a lot of alcohol is drunk during that conference, but because a lot of the people come in during March, you know, we have great weather then, and then do a lot of networking with other companies. It's a very open liberal culture in Austin. Uh, when you talk about accelerators, we have that. And what's more unusual is last year, the chamber had bid on on the project called the Army Futures Command. If you're wondering what that is, that is the second Army headquarters. The, Arm the US Army has never announced a second headquarters since 1973. And they picked Austin. What that meant for our city was we now have um, the, the Army Futures run on a $32 billion annual budget. So what happens then is you're getting a lot of companies, a lot of talent that are coming to Austin to seek opportunities there as well. So there's a, a, a sort of a talent attraction when we do get some of these companies in. And Lalaji, um, regarding what Joe Squidland said about affordability, what about affordability and housing in London to attract talent? How do you manage that situation? It, th there's no doubt it's an issue. Housing is expensive, but um, individual organizations are doing something about this. So for instance, um, in West London now, Imperial College London is building a whole new life sciences quarter. And among the things that they're doing, as well as building amazing office space, amazing wet labs, amazing dry labs, is that they're creating um, housing for scientists. So it's low cost housing, particularly for research scientists. And it's been deliberately made to be big enough so that they can bring their families as well. And that's just creating a whole new life sciences quarter in West London, in a part of London that had been pretty run down. So because the problem is now quite big, the solutions are also quite big and imaginative, and that's what you have to do to, um, to get over that particular hump. Th thank you. Um, I think that we are running out of time. Is it correct or not? Yes, I'm really running out of time. So um, thank you for joining for this session, the first session on talent. Thank you, Dan, um, Lalaji, Quilan, and Mikel. Thank you for coming from abroad, not you, because you came <laughs> almost walking, but coming from Copenhagen, London, and especially Austin was a pleasure, and I think that we shared good examples, and let me end by saying that for those from Barcelona, um, we in Barcelona Global, who is, um, we try to um, identify good um, ways of doing good practices, um, those that we just learned from Copenhagen, Austin, and London, we are trying to bring them to Barcelona. We are trying to bring something like the International House uh, to be based in Barcelona, where all procedures will be developed in a single office, which is a dream, but it's possible. Copenhagen did. We would like also 
to bring public and private sector all together working to attract investments, students and visitors like London did and we will try to do something like London and partners and we will also would like to link all the festivals, all the capacity of attraction through lifestyle that Austin has in a special state like Texas is and in a special nation like the United States is in Barcelona because also Barcelona shares with Austin those festival movement but we also need to link those festivals into um, attraction of economic activity in order that people like Tech City would be able to grow um, faster uh, through also those international houses, those partner, public private public private partnerships and that link with festivals as a, as a city. So thank you for coming and hope you keep enjoying these um, sessions.